The 2020 NBA draft order is officially set following the wild lottery that included the Knicks falling to 8th, Cleveland falling to 5th, and with Charlotte and Chicago moving up to 3 and 4 respectively. People have different philosophies with their mock drafts, but here we like to find a sweet spot of potential and fit and try to predict what makes sense for their future and where they might go based on what they've done historically and the information front offices have already given out. If you want a more accurate look at how I feel about some of these guys, go look at the Big Board 2.0 that I've done because there are a lot of players who get taken in spots wildly different than I've ranked them. In this video, we'll get in depth about the lottery picks and then highlight the important guys from there. Comment down below if you would be interested in doing a community mock draft where you actually get to control a team and make the picks for them. I think that would be the most interesting way to do this. And sorry for the long intro, but let's go ahead and get into it. Now at number one, Minnesota takes Anthony Edwards. It's not the best fit for them, but I think his potential is something you bet on if you're the T-Wolves. In addition, guys like Lamella Ball and James Wiseman would fit quite poorly for numerous reasons. I think Edwards makes the most sense as the number one pick for the Minnesota Timberwolves. At the two spot, Golden State is in an interesting position. They could trade back, get another asset, and take a guy like Onyeka Okongwu, who would fit exceptionally well with them, or they could package the pick with Wiggins for better pieces, or they could just take James Wiseman who at worst is a version of the Damian Jones JaVale McGee athletic center they've had over the last few years. I would bet they move out of this spot or eventually trade the pick, but for now, they take wise for number two. Even though Charlotte backed up the Brinks truck for Terry Rozier last summer, and Devontae Graham turned into a really good player, they take another point guard here. Lamella Ball's potential is too high to pass up at number three, and it gives the Bobcats, I mean the Hornets, the biggest star they've ever had in franchise history. There's a high possibility Michael Jordan doesn't even look in his direction just to spite LeVar and not have to deal with his antics, but he's also in the money-making business, and LaMelo will sell tickets. At number four, the Bulls take Denny Avdia. At 6'8", with his skill set, he could play the point forward position and set up guys like Kobe White and Zach Levine, who we all know can get buckets with the best of them. With no Jim Boylan, I like the direction this Bulls team could be heading in next season. Number five, Cleveland gets Onyeka Okongwu. If you watch my big boards, you know how I feel about him. I think he's the best center in the class, and especially in the modern era. The Cavs already have a ton of guards they need to develop, so another guard really wouldn't make sense here. Andre Drummond will likely be moved next season, and it would open up a spot for Okongwu to come in and be a difference maker. Atlanta is on the clock at number six. They've done a pretty good job of building their team over the last few years. In a perfect world, they get Okongwu or Wiseman, but I've got them taking Tyrese Halliburton. Halliburton can allow Trey to play off the ball more and run the second units, and he's a solid defender who can help hide Trey. Detroit takes Killian Hayes at number 7. I really enjoy Hayes' game. I think he can grow into a real star in Detroit if they hand him the keys and are patient in his development. Retaining Christian Wood and keeping Blake Griffin on the team would certainly help him out, and his relationship with Will Bynum, a former Piston, would likely quickly make him comfortable in Detroit. The Knicks fell all the way to number eight, but there are still a ton of options available for them here. I think they take Devin Vassell. If there's anything the Knicks need, it's stability, and I think Vassell will bring that. He's a great 3 and D prospect and would serve as a great building block alongside RJ Barrett and company. The Washington Wizards take Isaac Okoro at number nine. During the Wall and Beal era, the small forwards have enjoyed a lot of success and I think Okoro would be great alongside them. They'll also push him to grow offensively while he takes over that wing defender role in the beginning of his career. At number 10, the Suns take Kyra Lewis, one of my favorite guys in this draft. We just saw the success Javon Carter and Campaign had as the backup point guard on this team and I think Kyra Lewis absolutely kills that role. I see him learning from one of the best playmakers in Ricky Rubio and taking over for him in the next few seasons. This spot is perfect for the Spurs. With the number 11 pick, they take Sadiq Bey. Bey just feels like a Spurs guy. He can, he can shoot, defend, and pass. And with Rudy Gay aging, Bey makes a lot of sense. And he's also very low maintenance and fits their system well. Sacramento has the number 12 pick. And they get a steal in Obi Toppin here. I have him ranked at number seven on my big board, but almost all the teams from 5 to 11 are either weird or bad fits for him. He can't fall any further than here just based on talent alone. It's still a weird fit with him and Bagley in the front court, but you just have to figure it out. Take the best player available 
and get closer to ending that playoff drought. At number 13, New Orleans gets a potential steal in Cole Anthony. The Pelicans need a bit of an offensive punch at the guard position, and I think Cole Anthony can do that. Lonzo Ball and Drew Holiday's ability to play off the ball allow Cole to handle those ball handling responsibilities at times. It also gives you flexibility to possibly deal Drew Holiday or Lonzo Ball or make any other moves. The last pick of the lottery belongs to Boston. The Celtics take Tyrese Maxey here. Maxey has the potential to be a great defender and a solid off-ball guard that the Celtics need. Brad Wanamaker isn't really getting the job done, and minutes with Maxey and Smart out there would be hell for opposing backcourts. After the lottery, it could get kind of weird with officials making decisions based on a ton of different team-building ideologies, but this is how I see the rest of the first round. I've got Orlando taking RJ Hampton at 15. It's a bit high for me, but it makes sense for their team. Portland gets another big wing forward guy in the Aminu mold with Precious Achua. And Minnesota and Dallas swing for the fences with Alexi Pokusevsky and Jaden McDaniels. Jalen Smith, Aaron Nesmith, and Tyrell Terry are all great fits on their respective teams here. Each of their skill sets would be greatly appreciated the way those rosters are currently constructed. The same can be said for Patrick Williams, Theo Maladon, and Tyler Bay. This area of the draft is definitely the best it's been in years. At 25, I have OKC taking Leandro Bulmaro. He could be a draft and stash guy, but I just like his potential for them this late in the draft. Rent really to the Knicks at 27 is just perfect. It's not too high in the draft for there to be a ton of pressure on him, and his skill set is definitely needed in New York. He could be a legitimate steal here if this scenario was to happen, and it would make up for some of the pain of falling to the eighth pick. The Lakers take Desmond Bain at 28, who fits their team exceptionally well. He's a knockdown shooter and a guy who you'd be comfortable with handling the ball for minutes without LeBron on the court. Robert Woodard and Reggie Perry fill out the first round and make Mississippi State especially proud. While they may not have the ceilings of some of the guys still available, Toronto and Boston just need contributors who fit their teams, and both of these guys do. This is how I see the second round shaking out. I love the Paul Reed, Cassius Stanley, and Malachi Flynn picks. And Devon Dawson is someone I could see going as high as the late first to where he goes here at 51. He's talented, but has a lot of questions, and it's always tough to break through as a guard. Toronto takes Jay Scrub at 59, and with their track record, I could see him becoming the steal of the draft. Anyways, that's going to do it for this video. Comment down below who you want your favorite team to pick. And again, if you would be interested in being involved in a possible community mock draft, you can hit me down in the comments or on Twitter at Hoop Intellect with three L's. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and don't forget to subscribe for more. This is Hoop Intellect, and I'm out.